Welcome to this episode of What's Going On with KD, where I tell you the last things happening in the KD world and also how they're made, like actually looking at the code so you can hopefully understand it and start helping if you want as well. So let's actually start right away. We've got some of the changes and I've brought up all of the merge requests related to them. And the first one is improving, improving sorry, the breeze plasma thing contrast for the sc scroll bar, slider, progress bar, and so on. And this person that did the merge request, super skilled, put a lot of before, after, very nice pictures that clear what is actually changing. If you see this one, you've got the new style of the uh, well, this is the volume applet with the slider and this part blue is a bit dark and on some wallpapers it might be hard to see, whereas the new one is brighter and easier to catch. And the change is really like nice, it's a bug that was fixed and how was that done? So it's a plasma theme change and so you should know that we are editing SVGs. In this case, the difference in SVGs is uh, small enough for the actual um, changes to be shown, not all of them. When you're changing SVG, most likely you won't get a clean diff, but in this case, we can easily see what's going on. So this opacity, as an example, was changed from 0 0.3 to like 24. This dot one was changed to 0 0.9 and we got added this opacity 0 0.525. Again, SVG, very hard to see what is actually going on. We know that we're tweaking with opacities. In what files we've got the bar meter horizontal, bar meter vertical, scroll bar and slider. So the idea is we get these files from the plasma theme, which again, see my plasma theme videos if you want to look more into them. And they're in source plasma framework, that is desktop theme breeze widgets on or on your local system, slash ATC slash share slash um, plasma slash desktop themes, slash default, slash, slash widgets, I think. And um, these four files, and we're tweaking the opacity of the elements so that they are actually more opaque compared to before. And as you can see, it's mostly the same change all over again for all of the elements that, you know, actually are actually interesting for this kind of thing. And that's about it. Like it was a rather simple change that actually improved Plasma right away. So uh, of course the person actually doing this didn't uh, open up like Kate and started changing all of these lines. It most likely did this using Inkscape. So if you want to help improve KD Plasma with something that's wrong with the Plasma team, that is like, whatever you see in the panel or in kickoff, the style of it. Well, just open up Inkscape, see my Plasma theme videos, and hopefully you'll be able to help right away. Change number two is, this is actually a commit, not a merge request. And the feature is add feature to annotate existing screenshots. So what's the idea? If you take a screenshot as an example of a part of the screen, for some reason, it doesn't work right now on my computer, but it would show you a preview of the screenshot you just made. The, we had that before, but also now a button to annotate the screenshot that you have just made, since Spectacle does have that feature as well now. So this is a commit, so we can see all the code changes. What's the idea? So let's jump into the important parts. So in this thing, uh, if uh, let's actually jump into the actually interesting stuff, which is, well, let's start, sorry, uh, I'll get it, this one. Okay, so let's start with these lines. So what we are doing is I'll notify 
is uh, our mm, sorry I was saying L notify is a key notification item which is a new not key notification using the string literal uh, that is like the title new screenshot saved what are we doing in this line of code that interests us we are adding I lost the line again we are setting the actions of the notification, so actually the list of buttons that is in the actual notification, to be the string annotate. And we connect, what's the idea of connect? So basically we're taking connect takes an element, uh, a thing that happens, another element and a function. And that is, if this thing happens in this element, then call this function of this uh, element. This is called a signal and this is, I forgot what it's called, sorry about that. Anyway, if the notification action activated is called, then on this element call the function which is defined in this lambda. This is a, a lambda function. We create a new instance we set the program of the new instance to spectacle. We set the arguments of this new instance of the program spectacle to be new instance and edit existing. And also they saved at local to local file. Yes, yeah, save uh, in a local file. And then we start this new instance. So basically we are creating a new application telling, okay, this new application is spectacle. The, application to take um, screenshots and we call this uh, spectacle up with this edit existing flag which opens up the editor for the screenshot that you have just made and that's mostly like the important part is this one we add a new action and we say when this action is activated then open up spectacle and start editing right away the screenshot that you've just made. Now you might ask, are we sure that this edit existing property or like a flag for spectacle actually exists? And the answer is yes, because it's implemented here. So m edit existing parser is set edit existing. What's this? So we're taking the parser of the arguments and we check if it's set the flag called edit existing, which is one the one that we're calling spectacle with if the button is called. And we're setting if it exists true to edit existing. And if it's true, then we actually parse the value of this edit existing flag uh, to fetch uh, the file name. And if the file, man, file name is not empty and existing uh, and it's not null, then if it's a relative path, then you make it an absolute path. And then we set the file name to that file name. So set file name, I guess, I'm not an expert of spectacle, but actually opens up the screenshot, that particular screenshot and changes this m save to output equals true. Honestly, I'm not sure what's saved to output, but the important part is here. So again, we are calling spectacle with this edit with existing flag in this part of the code. Also, sorry about what I said before, uh, the save that local file is actually the path to the screenshot that you're clicking. So we are calling it with the edit existing and then with the path to the file. And just above it, we have the code to actually read that edit existing flag and set the file name of the screenshot we're editing to what's after the flag that we received. What else? Last thing I'm going to show you of this merge request. In here, we are in the function populate command line parser and we're adding a string E a string edit existing, a string open and edit existing screenshot file, and a string existing file name. What's this? 
well, this is most likely going to end up in the help uh, part of Spectacle. If you go open up Spectacle in the command line, well, you can actually invoke it somewhere. I gotta have a terminal somewhere. You can actually invoke it through command line. And you, if you go with help, you can see all of its options. As an example, I can write spectacle minus F and it will take a screenshot of the full screen. So it's very nice. And this is what actually is telling uh, spectacle what to write in the standard output. Next one, sorry, this is still spectacle. Add some keywords to help people find Kate and Kwrite. As an example, if we type notepad, if we can actually type notepad correctly, notepad. Well, that tells me I don't have the patch installed, which is weird, I thought I had, but we can see in the screenshot that if you search for notepad, Kwrite actually pops up. I think it's also like uh, develop, I can't type today, develop, and sorry, I, I really thought I had the patch. Okay, I don't know, it was working five minutes ago. I don't know. But anyway, if you're on latest and you search for notepad, keyword will pop up. If you search for develop, um, Kate should pop up. So uh, it's actually easier to find Kate and Kwrite if you're looking for these kind of words, uh, searching for them in kickoff for, I guess, Keyrunner as well. It's nice to have a small change. Let's actually see how it's done. And we can see that in Kate and Kwrite data, org KD Kwrite desktop and org KD Kate desktop, there is this and this flags, also this one, that actually affects these kind of things. The X KD keywords are the key keywords that will make something pop up when you search for it. In this case, it's like text, TXT, editor, node, notepad. In the, in the case of Kate is this plus programming, uh, developer, okay, develop is not there. Maybe if search for programming, you see it's working. It, it was working. You can see that Kate is actually popping up. Sorry, it was not develop, but developer. Kate, see? And so if you search for those words, things will pop up. And categories, now Kate is also in the development category, which makes sense. It is a literally, literally, sorry, three lines change, just three lines that actually help something become better in terms of usability, because you can actually find it easily. As an example, uh, Linus uh, complained about the fact that Spectacle does not pop up if you search for snipping. And in order to do that, you just have to go and find the org kd spectacle.desktop file and add a section called x kd keywords, or if it's already there, you just add snipping to the list and that's it. Now, I don't think anyone has done that yet. So it's a easy merge request up for grabs. If you want to start uh, contributing for KDE, that should be super easy. If you don't know how to make your first patch, I've done a video on that and you can actually do everything without even having to, uh, you know, um, copy all of the KDE files, which is called clone, sorry, git clone all the files. You don't even have to do that. You can do that just through the web browser. Next one, which I won't show you the code because it's even too complicated for me. It's a big merge request, but it's still nice to see what's going on in the KD community. Use Milo for search results for the new FX overview. So as you know, maybe, maybe you don't, there is a new overview in progress for KD Plasma, which is like this one, I don't know if you know like Spectacle, it kind of remi reminds me of that. And the new thing is that you can now search for things using Milo, which is the same thing as far as I know that powers um, KRunner and Kickoff. So now if in this new overview, you search for Notepad, then 
kwrite will pop up in the overview, which is nice, like rather nice. There's a lot of discussion on some UI things, but it's uh, merged. So it's nice to see that the new overview is getting work done. And the last one is not a merge request, it's an issue, but I think it's interesting anyway to show like our discussions. And in this case, feel free to give me some opinions, opinions in the comments. There is this discussion regarding the fact that our default UX is too similar to Windows. Some like some people say that it's too similar, some people say it's not similar enough. Why would it be a problem if it's too similar? Well, in terms of promotions, I'm also in the KD promotion group and it's quite a mess uh, if you try to promote a program that's very similar, even if it's not your fault, maybe you were there before, but if it's similar to another product that is more successful, people will see you as a ripoff. If right now I go install some random people, a random person that doesn't know about Plasma, KD Plasma, they will think that this is a ripoff of Windows. It's like similar, but the logo is different, which is sad. Um, so one thing that we could consider is try to have a user experience that's slightly different and makes you actually see that we do have a different uh, idea and philosophy. We do have a different philosophy compared to Windows, but when you just open up KD Plasma, it's not so easy to see it at first glance. If you open up GNOME, you can see that right away. It's very dif different and you maybe have to relearn it, but that's kind of the point of actually making, making you understand that there is things like that are different compared to Windows. If you start with KD Plasma, some people say it's just a ripoff and that's sad. Especially we like the, the other from these things. We both have a light team by default, a button panel, start menu as accessed by clicking a button on the far, I guess, left edge of the panel. I guess this is left and right. Taskbar showing high console new representation of open apps. Actually in Windows, sometimes it's like, uh, only icons only unless they're open and if so is also with the name of the app. I don't know wh when that happens. System tray, desktop files, window title bars with a, um, an app icon to the left and minimize, maximize, close buttons to the right. It might seem like very stupid to you that we're, we would like overthink this kind of things, but when you actually try to make a desktop that's for everyone, we also need to consider these things from especially, I think, in my opinion, a promotion point of view. If you see other products that are successful like uh, macOS, I think that macOS in its origin could have gone for a decoration that was the same one as Windows with an X to close an application instead of the uh, like um, green, yellow and red uh, dots. But they probably like it. It was it wasn't going to be an issue to have an X instead of a red dot to close an application. They probably went with that either to distinguish it from Microsoft or other competitors, and Windows probably did the same with their style as well. And that's really the point. And I think that macOS is a great example because this green, yellow, red thingy really stuck with us. And if you see those three dots, you just know it's macOS. And if, if you go see a KD Plasma that's customized to be macOS, you always see those three color dots. So it becomes part of the brand. So what can we do? There are some solutions proposed. As an example, we could use Breeze Dark or Breeze Twilight by default or put a panel on the left screen edge and stuff like I won't show you the whole of it. There's lots of discussion. This is not to say, let me very, very, be very clear here that this will happen. Absolutely not. It's just a way to discuss what we are doing with our user experience and if there should be anything that we should do differently. 
And that was about everything for this video. Again, if you have an opinion on this last matter, feel free to tell me. I can't like assure you that your opinion will be regarded as the best ever and immediately implemented, but I do read all of the comments. So, yep. Thanks to all the people, people that are sponsoring through donations these videos. It's super like makes me so happy. I receive comments with donations saying like, I don't know, I hope this is enough. It is like, it, it's really giving them me the motivation to go forward with this. And I hope you like this kind of videos as well. And see you tomorrow.